I'm starting off the course with recording DI guitar in Logic because it's the easiest method to jump right into, even if you don't have an amp or microphones to record with, and also because there are some basic principles regarding DI recording signal levels and impedances that I want you to understand. So DI stands for direct injection, but it's often more commonly called direct input. DI recording allows you to plug your electric guitar or bass directly into your audio interface and select it as an input on an audio channel, then assign the Amp Designer plugin or other third-party plugins if you like, and model amplifier tones directly within Logic without using an amp or microphones whatsoever. Before I get into that, I want you to understand the difference between line level, microphone level, and instrument level signals. Microphone level signals are often called low Z signals. These have low impedance, low voltage, and high current. This is like the signal that comes out of a mic before it gets to a mic preamplifier. The mic preamp takes the mic level signal and boosts it to line level so that the signal is high enough for the analog to digital converter in your audio interface to convert to digital and then record into logic. Now you don't want to plug your guitar or bass directly into a mic or line level input. It's not usually possible with mic level inputs because they typically have XLR microphone jacks, but line inputs are typically quarter inch inputs. Mic and line inputs are balanced inputs, and they use balanced connectors like XLR and TRS, not unbalanced connectors like a TS connector on an instrument cable. TRS and XLR are both balanced, and have positive, negative, and ground wires on them. This is why XLR has three pins, and TRS has a tip, ring, and a sleeve, so three points of contact. With TS connectors, there's just two, a tip and a sleeve. Instrument cables work with unbalanced signals. Now, if you do plug your guitar into a line level input, you'll hear it, but it'll be a very faint signal, and it won't be loud enough to really record with or do anything useful with. And if you add gain, it'll just sound like garbage. So you don't want to go down that route. So this is where instrument level signals and inputs come into play. This is the signal that comes from your guitar or bass. These are often called high Z signals. They're high impedance, high voltage, but low current. There's two main ways to make your interface or preamp accept a high Z instrument signal. Some interfaces will have an instrument level input built right into them. My Focusrite interface has two of these and I can switch the inputs to instrument level directly from the included mix control app that came with the interface. And some mic preamps will have a front-facing high Z input as well. Now, if you only have mic inputs, the second method requires a DI box to convert your instrument level down to mic level. Then you can plug the DI box directly into a mic preamp. DI boxes come in all shapes and sizes and price points too. They can be a simple passive DI box like this Radial Pro D2, which is a stereo DI as well, so it can handle stereo DI and dual mono sources. Or it can be an active DI like this A Designs Ready Tube DI box. This can impart some additional tone and character on the DI, and I use this quite a bit for recording DI bass. I mentioned three terms earlier, impedance, voltage, and current. The best analogy for these is to think of a hose with water flowing through it. The size of the hose is the impedance, the voltage is the pressure built up in the hose, and the current is the flow of water. If you just plug a guitar into a line input, it's an impedance mismatch. It's like suddenly connecting the hose to a much smaller hose or pinching off the end of the hose with your thumb. All of a sudden, you're going from a larger hose with lots of water pressure but a slow flow to a smaller hose with even more water pressure, so a higher voltage, and a rapid flow of water, so a higher current. From an electrical standpoint, this can have some detrimental effects on the tone of your DI signal. However, you can play around with intentional impedance mismatching to get creative with your tone. The Cloudlifter ZI allows you to plug in an instrument level signal and output a mic level signal, so it functions like a DI box but you can also vary the impedance and output level to customize your DI tone. It's active as well and works with phantom power. Here's three examples all using the same amp designer setting in Logic. The first one was recorded with a standard instrument level input. <laughs> So 
So that sounds just fine. The second example was recorded with the ZI at its lowest impedance setting, but the output gain was turned up quite a bit. Okay, so it's a bit boomy and bassy and kind of stuffy sounding. The ZI has a low frequency filter as well, so I flipped this on for the third example and I pulled up the impedance to a higher setting. Okay, so much brighter, much more present. I like this tone the best of the three, also note that I had my mic preamp all the way down for the two ZI examples. No additional mic preamp gain was needed, and in this example, it truncated and clipped the signal as well. I know with microphones, clipping and overloading is a bad thing, but with DI guitar, you can experiment with impedance and gain to achieve a more desirable tone. So that's an overview of DI, signal levels, and impedance. <laughs>